Hey, everybody, this is part of our full length primetime podcast. You can check it out on Blog Talk Radio, iTunes, YouTube, plenty more. I hope you enjoy. This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up, everybody? Ricky Widmer here, along with the one, the only, Brandon Swanee Swanson. Hey, hey, hey. And we are back for another edition of the Primetime Podcast here on Most Valuable Podcast. If you're on YouTube, hello. It is great to see your wonderful faces yet again today. And if you're on Block Talk Radio, iTunes, and Stitcher, thank you guys for letting us talk to you today for the download and the listen. However you may be listening, we are happy that you are here with us today. And Brandon... We got a jam-packed show, like we always do. I kind of lied a few weeks ago. I said uh, we're going to talk nothing but football for the remaining of now until the national championship. That was a flat-out lie because Butler went ahead and extended Chris Holtman and his contract. So we're going to go ahead and look at that extension. What does it mean for Butler's future? We're going to look at Florida State and DeAndre Francois. A comment from Matt Williams said, hey, can you guys talk about Florida State? We love taking in what the listeners want to hear. So we're going to talk Florida State. And then you are an Alabama fan. So I felt like I had to throw this in. We're going to talk about the Alabama quarterback situation. Is it a controversy? Or a blessing for Nick Saban, but we're, we're going to start with basketball before we go to football, Brandon, and Chris Holtman and the Butler Bulldogs have agreed to an extension that will keep him the head of the Butler program through the 2024-25 season, and I'm just going to be frank with you, Brandon. I'm going to be frank with you right away. What does this mean for Butler's future? I think it means some really good things for Butler's future. I think it means that they're going to continue to stay consistent Um, in the Big East. I think that hopefully this means that he's going to be able to continue to build this program and get them even farther once it comes tournament time. But this team was 25-9 and last season. And they were 12 and 6 within their conference, just behind Villanova, who was 32 and 4. So I think that Butler, they're a team that's definitely going to be competitive. I think that keeping Holtman around, I think it's going to definite. It shows that they think that this is the guy, and they think that Chris Holtman is going to be the guy that's going to continue to lead Butler and be able to bring Butler a bright future. And they've extended him through 2024, 2025. And I, I think that an eight-year extension like that, that means they're in it for the long haul. They're expecting really good things from this guy. I think they're going to be able to get it. Well, and my first thought was, I mean, we talked about Holtman at the end of the season. We talked about him when we got to the kind of coaching carousel. And the big thing that we were kind of talking about is, oh, does, does Holtman kind of take the jump to – an LSU to a Missouri that we're looking for coaches. Does he look to get out of that Butler realm and go to the power five, use Butler as kind of a stepping stone, maybe as you could say his predecessor did in Brad Stevens, who was there and now is in the NBA. That's kind of a different, that's a different comparison though, because obviously the NBA is on a higher plateau than a power five program. But I looked at this and went, hey, if he's there for the entire eight years, this could be a really good thing for Butler because the biggest thing you can have when you are a college program is stability. I'm going to go over to the football side of things, and I mean, you look at some of the great football programs, Alabama, Florida State for right now is at the top, Clemson, um, you look at what Ohio State has been able to do. The big thing that these big programs that are doing well have, and Alabama's the biggest kind of, to me, the model of this, is they've been consistent for so many years. Same head coach, same system. Recruits come in. They know what they're getting. In the basketball realms, you got Kentucky since Coach Cal has been there. You have since Roy Williams has been at North Carolina, since Coach K has been at Duke. You have these successful programs where it's like, I'm going to go there because I know what I'm getting. This coach has been there since most of these kids coming in. They're going to say, oh, well, the beginning of time, because for some of them now it's going to be, well, he's been there longer than I've been alive in some cases. 
And for Butler, that's what they need. They need a coach that's going to be there so that when they bring in recruits, because let's be honest, a team like Butler is never going to bring in the same kind of recruits as a North Carolina, as a Duke. But if they can show that consistency, and not just consistency, that consistency with a coach that has proven, hey, not only are we going to be in the running to win our conference in the Big East, but we are also going to be a team that could make a run in the national tournament. And that's what this past year kind of showed to me, where it wasn't just a, oh, we're going to be out in the round of 32 again. No, we're not a one-and-done team. This year we made that stride to go back to the Sweet 16. And now with Holtman in the future, their goal has to be past the Sweet 16, Elite 8 and on. You talk about consistency, and, and since Holtman's been there, that's what they've had. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 14-15 season, 23-11, and 11, uh, got to the third round. They were 12-6 and six in the conference. 2015-16, uh, 22-11, and 10-8 in the conference. Uh, got to the second round, and then 16-17, 25-9, 12-6 in the conference, and they got to the Sweet 16. So uh, a, a record of 70-31 uh, and 31 with Butler, 34 and 20 within the, the the conference. I think you can get better in the conference. Mm-hmm. Uh, 12 and 6 is the best that they've done so far. But there's definitely a reason why you want to keep Chris Holtman around. Is that this is a guy who's bringing consistency. And this year he took two losses off of what they had had before at 11, brought it down to nine, and got to the Sweet 16. So you have to think. Why try to move in a different direction when you can just extend this guy? He's successful. Team's doing well underneath him. Two second place finishes, especially when you're competing with Villanova, a really good, consistent team. Even before Villanova won it last year, they were still consistent within their own conference. The thing was, is they were just always dogged because mm-hmm. they couldn't compete in the national tournament. Well, they finally were able to. So Villanova finally getting some credit, which I think is going to help Butler go up a little bit as well when people are talking about the Big East. But Butler, def- definitely a team that is going to be competitive, I think, for a, for a while to come now. And it's just not Holtman. I mean, it's the players that he has as well that he's going to be able to build around, too. Well, and I mean, the losses in conference that I look at with Holtman since he's been there, I mean, this past year, the losses that he had in conference, the St. John's loss on the road, to me, that's unexcusable. A team as low as St. John's you shouldn't be losing against, but I mean, they do get big wins. They beat Villanova, who was the number one team in the nation. Their other losses were Creighton, who's always a tough team, They lose to Xavier at the end of the year. That was a team that made a run in the tournament as well, a very good Big East team. They go ahead and lose to Providence, which is always a tough team. And then the two upset losses to me, St. John's and Georgetown, were the two kind of inexcusable. Maybe Seton Hall this year because Seton Hall wasn't the exact same team without Isaiah Whitehead that they were a year before. And then I look at that year before, the one that had a – little bit more losses, had two additional losses in the conference. I mean, they lose to, yet again, Providence, Villanova this time. They swept Villanova this year. They lose to Xavier, who was a top-five team, Marquette last year. So it's not like they're losing to cupcake teams. Maybe the St. John's one. Okay, that's the cupcake team that they lost to. But the Big East is tough. And it's, it's one of those things where, of course, if you're in the ACC, if you're in the Big 12, if you're in the Big 10, you might sit there and laugh at the Big East, but these teams play each other very closely. And let me just jump in really mm-hmm. quickly to make a quick point to what Go you're ahead. saying. You talk about how it's tough. The Bulldogs' incoming class of four players mm-hmm. uh, reflects how well Holtman has been able to fare in his recruiting. So Butler's 2017 class is the most mm-hmm. touted in school history and yet ranks no higher than 5th in the Big East and 33 in the nation by 247 Sports. Mm -hmm. So that that speaks to your point. The Big East is no joke. Well, and they were able to do that and become second in the Big East. And I look at it and I go, is Holtman ever going to... Is he ever going to bring Butler to number one in the Big East? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say the best that Holtman will ever do, the best that Butler will ever do, is two in the Big East. And it has nothing to do with their program with saying, oh, how good they are, how bad they are, however you want to phrase it. It's just who's ahead of them, Villanova. Villanova is a powerhouse. 
They are a powerhouse from the Big East. They're a team that won a national championship, was a number one seed this year. They're a powerhouse. And I mean, there might be a year where they take a step back, but each and every year we're going to look at Villanova and go, oh, Coach Wright and Villanova, they're going to win the Big East. They're our automatic lock to win the conference. But the thing that Holtman can do is I look at this past tournament, they beat a good Winthrop team, a team that I thought was actually going to upset them coming in. I thought that was an upset alert game. They get that win. They beat a big mid-Tennessee state team, a mid-Tennessee state team that was coming in with a lot of fire. They were saying, hey, we upset Michigan State last year and everyone overlooked us. This year, we're going to show you we deserve to be here. They won and done it because Butler beats them. And the team they lost to was the team that won the national championship in the North Carolina Tar Heels. So it's one of those things where I look at it and I go, well, you can kind of accept that loss in the Sweet 16 because it's like Mark always says when we talk about football, hey, if I lose in the playoffs, I want to lose to the champion. That's who I want to lose to. I want to lose to the team that went ahead and won it all. And I think that that just also speaks to to Holtman is that his – his guys are progressively, I think, getting better each mm-hmm. year, and they are being more competitive, and they're being able to compete against the big dogs. Mm-hmm. And I think that uh, those are all reasons why you keep this guy around. Those are all reasons why you keep this guy around. And, and in a statement, uh, Holtman said, Butler truly is a special place, and my family and I are thankful to be part of a great academic institution and an athletics department that is a source of pride for those who embrace Butler in the Butler way. Our student athletes, our staff, and so many throughout our campus are remarkable at what they do, and I'm excited to continue to work alongside them. He's got a contract eight years long. Eight years long. Can't, I can't even imagine what I'm going to be doing in eight years. Mm-hmm. But he's got it for eight years long. And I think that in that amount of time, if it's not broken, he can build up a really, really strong program. Stronger than what it is now. And Butler's really coming along. Again, Ricky, they were supposed to be picked. They were not supposed to be. But they were picked to be fifth or sixth in the division, and they end up to be in the conference, and they end up to be number two. two? Well, they pretty much proved everybody wrong. And again, they're number two behind Villanova. Mm -hmm. That's really impressive, but it's the consistency that this guy has shown. It's the consistency that he's been able to bring to this program, and it's the success that I think this this program can see. They can envision it. They can see it happening Mm -hmm. down the road. You've already been, every year with him, you've been to the tournament. You keep that going. Sweet 16 again. Get Elite 8. Elite Eight again, Final Four. I mean, you've got an opportunity here to be able to build something special, and he clearly knows how to recruit, and that is really big as well. One of the last questions I'm going to ask you, and this is this is where we talk so much good things about this contract, and this is where I kind of throw in the, what's the word I'm looking for, maybe narcissistic question, or I throw in the non-positive question, the negative question, to kind of end all out, just to kind of look at it full circle. This is an eight-year contract extension. It's long. Eight years is a long time. You look at some of the coaches that have been around for eight years, they've been at their programs, they have built dominant programs. I will ask you this. If a job like Duke, North Carolina, Kentucky, a power five school of that magnitude opens up within these eight years and they go, hey, Chris, we want to talk. What do you think the odds are that Holtman stays at Butler the full eight years of the extension? Because just because he signed an extension doesn't mean he'll stay at Butler for all eight years. And there are going to be some big time jobs that open up within these eight years. You can count on that. Well, um, 
I know that you always go to the extreme on these, mm-hmm. so I'll play along with you. Um, and if <laughs> thank the you, thank if, you. if the Duke job opened up and they came knocking on your door mm-hmm. and you said, "Nah, I think I'm good." Oh, you're good. <laughs> I like that face. <laughs> No, 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 no. The the Duke Blue Devils. The Blue Devils, maybe you heard of us. You have to at least sit down and have a conversation with mm-hmm. them. Whether or not you end up taking it, or they even end up having you be their guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're talking with you, talking with somebody else, you know. You've got to at least sit down and talk about it. It's the Duke Blue Devils. It's 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 Duke. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's Duke basketball. I'm not talking Duke football. But... I think you sit down, you talk with them, you see what the, you know, what kind of guys you got going in. Uh, you you look at what you're able to do recruiting there, everything like that. Those are all factors, but you have to at least sit down and talk to them about that. But I, it, it would have to be that special job. That would have to be that special job. They would have to come to him. It would all have to be kind of worked along nicely, but and they would all have to fall into place. So. And in such in such a way, where it would, you know, really really draw him to be there. You know, it couldn't just be, you know, NC State. Mm-hmm. You know, it couldn't it couldn't just be that. You stay if it's that, but if it's a Duke, if it's even a Louisville, something like that, you have to listen. Well, I think. And the one thing I was gonna say, and I'm glad you brought up Louisville because there are now. I was going to say one, but there are now two teams, only two teams that I would say Holtman would leave for. And the reason why I'm not going to say like Duke, North Carolina, the Duke job I threw out there because that's a job that Coach K ain't going to be there forever. And eventually we will get to the day where Coach K steps down. I know on the Waddle and Sylvie show about a few months ago um, when we were in the tournament, they asked Coach Collins. At Northwestern, well, if that job opened up, would you take it? Because he was an assistant under Coach K before he came over and was the head of Northwestern basketball, and he kind of downplayed it. Like, oh, you know what? I I love it here, and I love Northwestern, where I'm like looking at going, you're full of shit. I'd, I'd take the Blue Devil job over a Northwestern any day just because of the prestige of it. But he's got to be a coach, though. He's a coach at Northwestern. He's got to be professional. I get why he said it. But the two schools that I could see Holtman leaving for, Kentucky and Louisville. And you might look and say, well, Ricky, we're probably good there because, I mean, I look at his assistants. He was the assistant at Ohio. I wouldn't leave Butler for Ohio. I mean, Gardner-Webb, I wouldn't go back to Gardner-Webb after being at Butler. Taylor, I wouldn't go back to the NAIA after being in D1 Division Basketball. But where is Holtman from? Where did he grow up and play his high school ball? Kentucky. And that's the only thing that I could see maybe drawing Holtman away from Butler is a pristine Kentucky job like the University of Kentucky, or Louisville. You kill me. I should have known this was coming because every time we talk about a coach <laughs> uh, that gets an extension or something I'm like that, looking Ricky, the next Ricky job. his last thing always is, all right, let me ask you a question. If he leaves, <laughs> not saying he will, but if he leaves, where's he going? <laughs> I just, I should have known it was coming. But that's the thing, and that's what I want to end it and kind of bring it full circle of, with these extensions overall, the things we talked about that were make it good, the consistency, it's great for Butler's future. But the end, I kind of flip it to the other side and that reality of just because he signed an eight-year deal doesn't mean he's going to stay. However, I think it'd be really hard for Holtman to leave because it's not he's not going to have the same situation that a Brad Stevens did with the Boston Celtics kind of knocking on his door but we're gonna flip it on to you guys now for the discussion down below in the comment section let us know what you think about holtman's extension what does this mean for butler's future and really butler fans i'm gonna throw the kind of real question out to you of do you think this is an eight-year extension do you think holtman will stay 
all eight years at Butler? Let us know down below in the comments section. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed a lot of emotion. If you want more, click this video right over my left shoulder. You will certainly not regret it.